I'm Paul Green from the University of Michigan, and this is a video that describes a series of videos that I want to produce for some time, and I'm delighted that uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology and Michigan Nexus from the College of Engineering has been willing to support it. I think you'll find that standards is generally viewed as a topic that's rather boring, and what I've tried to do is give you a sense that there's actually a lot of really useful content there that you need to think about, apply, and so forth, both in your research and in the design of products. So the goal of this particular video is just to give you a sense of what's in this series um, so that you're interested enough to go and watch them all. So first, a few words about me. I put this on this overview video so we don't have to include it in every video that we've produced. So I'm at the University of Michigan. I was here as a graduate student. I've been here for uh, now over 40 years, almost 40 doing research. And I've been involved in studying driver interfaces, driver workload, driver distraction, uh, and in particular really trying to get that research into practice through design standards. Uh, specifically in terms of additional background, I'm the leader of the driver interface, interface group at the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute. I teach industrial and operations engineering. So I teach courses in automotive, human factors, and human computer interaction, and also the uh, a human factor short course that helps support this work. As I noted, I've been involved with all kinds of standards. I've written a number of standards for SAE. I've been recently involved with some ANSI work on automated vehicles. Uh, at various times, I've contributed to activities of the International Standards Organization. So I've been uh, fairly active in taking research that I and others do and getting it into practice. It's just not very useful if it just sits in journals and nobody else, nobody does anything with it. So more specifically, there are five videos in this series, and I'm providing to uh, NIST, and they'll be on my website, the uh, PowerPoint decks associated with uh, this slide series, and I may have made one or two corrections in the actual PowerPoints that are distributed to revise things I noticed when I uh, produced the slides or, or developed the slides. So let me talk about them. So first there's this introduction, this video, that just gives a summary of the series. It's rather brief. Uh, second video in this series, and th this is no in no particular order, is a three-part uh, video on human factors standards that was specifically developed to support the human factors engineering uh, short course. So this is just a general introduction to standards in the International Standards Organization. There's a second segment on how to find standards in a particular ISO. And then a third part, which is really the bulk of the material on core human factors engineering standards. And there's sort of eight categories of documents that are covered in some uh, detail. Then the uh, and the next uh, video in this series is about automotive human factor standards, a topic that obviously I've been extremely uh, involved in. Uh, this particular video was developed originally to support IOE 437 automotive human factors as taught here at the University of Michigan, but I think it will have application beyond this particular uh, university. And in fact, I think that's going to be true for all these. Yes, they have some internal use, but I think the larger use is going to far exceed what happens here at the university. So there are uh, three parts to this video as well. Uh, sources of information, so there's a long list of places you can find information on automotive human factors. And uh, also online is a uh, Microsoft Word document that's uh, quite lengthy that lists all the standards, documents, requirements, and places you can find information, URLs for organizations, and so forth. Material that may not neatly fit into a video, but certainly is neat as supplemental information. Uh, then I tend to focus on ISO standards and talk about them in some detail. And then finally, non-ISO sources, in particular some information about uh, recommended practices and standards and guidelines of the Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, Part uh, four of this uh, series, or the fourth item here, are human computer interaction standards. This supports industrial operations engineering 436, which is the human computer interaction class taught here at the University of Michigan. But again, use is going to go well beyond the university. Uh, I know that many people teaching courses on human computer interaction just are not that familiar with the standards that are relevant to this particular topic. So this video has two parts. Uh, one to cover ISO 9241 
And ISO 9241 has so many parts that there's just no way this video could comprehensively cover it. In fact, to cover 9241 would probably require several videos. But I do think it gives a useful overview of the documents in 9241 and talks about a few of them in detail so users have a sense of what's in those documents. And the second part is the so-called square activity, which is related to software engineering as in an effort to really take the ideas from, from product development that relate to quality and apply them to human computer interaction and user interface design. Uh, that focuses on, in particular, on a series of documents that are uh, ISO 2506X, and X can be anywhere from zero, I think, to up to about six right now, uh, specific standards that are relevant to this topic. Um, the last set of documents are core SAE vehicle standards, and this is, again, to supplement the materials in uh, IOE 437, but there are other purposes. Uh, this document should be probably one of the, or this video will probably be the most widely viewed of the series because it has such a broad audience. Now, it has two parts to it. The first part are what I might call cla core classical standards, uh, oil viscosity, engine performance, and so forth things that for many, many decades have been important to SAE and for which they're standards. And then the second part is newer vehicle technology, electric vehicles, communications, and so forth, things that are now becoming much, much more important. There's no way, because SAE has literally written thousands of standards, to the best of my knowledge, that I can ever cover uh, SAE standards in uh, two videos. But the idea is to give you a sense of what's out there and kind of get you started on the process of looking into SAE materials. There is a huge amount there. Finally, I'd like to, to sort of bring to emphasize that there will be all the PowerPoint slides for these, this particular set of videos will appear on uh, the website of my team, umich.edu slash tilde driving, and also uh, somewhere on the NIST site that has yet to be determined. Um, but it will be available from NIST because they are the sponsor for this particular uh, research project. Um, finally, I want to identify a few other sources where you might find some information. There's really a very nice uh, report that uh, Breitenberg at uh, NIST has written. It's in a NIST technical report that has not gotten a lot of sort of big publicity in the big world, but actually quite nicely talks about uh, the ABCs of standard activities and I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, should you be interested in other information, you might wish to use the phrase training offered by standards developing organizations or development organizations or some variant of that to find uh, materials on this topic. In addition, I'd like to highlight the specific activities of a number of standards development organizations. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention the American National Standards Institute. Um, they have a page on education and training that you might find useful. Um, there's some other activities, such as Standards Learn. Uh, you may wish to look at what they have. And finally, there's a nice uh, education database. Um, and also, and finally, currently, there's an onboarding tutorial being developed by the ANSI Committee uh, on Education. So that might be useful as well. For the American Society of Testing Materials, ASTM, um, there's the Professor's Toolkit, there's some webinars, there's a whole bunch of other materials that ASTM provides, so you might find those to be useful. And finally, IEEE has extremely been active in standards development, so you might find their standards education page to be useful. Um, and they actually have a specific sub-website, standards.ieee.org, that uh, covers uh, this particular topic area and also a lot of uh, material in their standards university. So these p three organizations have really been active in standards and furthermore been active in trying to develop educational materials that you might find to be useful supplements to the material that I presented in this video. Uh, in addition, SAE has started to uh, really get more active in that area, and there's a program called Standards in the Classroom, which I've had some involvement with. And my guess is that the videos, these, this video series will probably be connected to the SAE website as well. Um, finally, I also want to emphasize that when you're looking for materials, you will not find them on Google very well because the materials often aren't publicly available. 
So you might look at the standards gov uh, NIST website to look for information. And here are a few other websites that might be useful. The Documentation Center, IHS, uh, there are a number of commercial uh, effort activities to uh, provide standards, but realize that you're going to have to pay for the documents. Uh, that's the way they make their money. And so you can also get some things from NIST. You can get some of these standards for free if you know how to, who to talk to at NIST, and I provide a link to that. So I want to, again, thank NIST for their support of this activity. It was funded by a contract to the University of Michigan. Um, NIST has their disclaimer, and you can see what it is. So nothing here is official NIST policy. It's produced by the University of Michigan, by me, for them. And I'd like, to, again, to thank them for their support. In addition, I'd like to thank Michigan Nexus from the College of Engineering for helping to produce these videos. Uh, this was all done as adjunct material to the Human Factors Engineering short course, which is taught the last week in July, first week in August. Uh, for more information about that course, I've given uh, a, a, some quotes that might, you might use. You might look for University of Michigan Human Factors Engineering short course, Center for Ergonomics, or, uh, or even just Michigan short course, and there's a reasonable chance that you'll come right to this URL. Uh, finally, I really want to emphasize that when you are looking to apply any of the standards, guidelines, best practices, recommended practices, or any other documents that are mentioned in this video series, that all I can do in this series is give you a summary of these documents. That in order to really effectively apply them, you need the full document. So I'm not saying that you should buy every document in this series, but rather listen to the videos and if the document is relevant to what you're doing, then go out and get it, because the materials will change over time. Uh, the key point made at the end here is that many of the projects you're going to be working on will have a rather significant cost. And for the project to not reach an appropriate, or not to reach a conclusion that is useful given the current standards, the current practices, or uses methods that are not recommended, or uses terms and ways that they're not intended, or just does things that are not consistent with accepted practice, will create all kinds of problems for you. So therefore, even though these documents, sometimes they cost $100 each, and you could end up spending $1,000 to get them all, that if it leads to a diminishing the utility of, a pro of an activity that's a hundred times more expensive, then it's really not, it's an investment that's worth making. So with that, I hope you find these, uh, this, video, this video series to be useful. And please, as you find useful documents, acquire them. If you have any uh, further questions, here's my contact information at the University of Michigan. You can email me at uh, pagreen at umich.edu. You'll find additional materials related to this topic on the website of my research team which is uh, umich.edu slash tilde driving. And we always have people saying, where's the tilde key? And in most keyboards, it's the upper left-hand corner. So with that, thank you for your attention, and I hope you find these materials to be useful.